the rest of the story. Peter Wishner was born in the coal mining community of Natticoke, Pennsylvania, and he could hardly wait until he was old enough to help. But the day he was six, the fair-haired, blue-eyed lad fell off a car when he tried to hitch a ride, and he was hurt. He was hurt bad, and the doctor said he would live, but he'd never, ever be strong enough to work in the mines. Never, ever. There were bleak years for the Wishners after that. Peter wore his weakness like a brand on his heart. He grew quiet and sullen. When he was better, he would watch from his window the other boys playing baseball. And then one day he was able to leave the house to play with the other boys. He had to bluff his way into the game and play twice as hard as anybody else to stay in. But the scrawny little weakling began to improve. And finally, from the unceasing effort and the long hours of disciplined practice, the lad won a place on the local Natticoke pit team. Sure enough, the lad they said would never be strong enough to dig coal began to make a name for himself as a baseball player. There were many disappointments in the following years. Managers even refused to try out the skinny kid from Pennsylvania. But then one day, as he was watching from the bench of the Three Rivers Club in Quebec, a player failed to show up. They had to use Peter in the lineup. It was just a practice game, but it was that chance. And for the first time in his life, Fortune turned toward Peter Wishner and smiled. The bases were loaded when Peter went to bat, and I tell you, he sent that first pitch halfway across Canada. It was a little easier after that. Peter finished that season with a 381 batting average to lead the entire Canadian League. And so it was that he ran and swung and slid and slammed his way into the majors into a uniform of the St. Louis Browns. Peter Wishner had come a long way up a lonely road to the top. And one day in a newspaper article, a father said that he had a young boy named Gary. The boy had lost an arm in an accident. Could Peter the Great big league baseball player who knew what it was like to be a little boy with an apparently insurmountable handicap. Could he spare a few minutes for that little lad who admired him so much? Well, Peter could and did. He paid the boy's way to a game one day. And afterward, for the only time in his life, as far as I know, Peter let go. He released some of that pent-up emotion he picked up that little three-year-old lad and he kissed the boy and tears were streaming down the tanned cheeks of that ball player, a big, wet torrent of tears. He'd played his heart out that day. He'd done everything that could be done on a ball field. Partly for 10,000 screaming fans, but mostly for, mostly for one little boy. Pete was crying, unashamed. Now we're partners, he told the little lad. Now we're partners, you and me. Three-year-old Gary would not be afraid to face life any longer. Not after what he'd seen today. And the winning score. For he was hugging to his heart a guy who understood. Peter Wishner... W-I-S-H-N-E-R, actually played baseball under the name Pete Gray. It was he who drove that long one clear across Canada that day, who blasted his way to the majors and set performance records in three leagues on the way. Pete Gray, who had faced the whole of life with one arm and one empty sleeve. And now you know the rest of the story.